I don't think I've ever said this publicly since taking back the name of Fish, but I actually quit Genshin Impact earlier this year. I got real, touched grass, picked up heavy things, and picked up more heavy things. Life was good. But in mid-August, something happened. A video creeped its way into my recommendations of a certain character being both lovable and extremely punchable. After seeing her once, I was hooked and decided to forego my newly earned freedom and return to the gacha hell from which I was born. Skip forward a few months, and here we are. 4.2 has concluded Genshin's best written arc yet, alongside bringing playable Farina into reality. And I couldn't be happier. Oh yeah, she also kind of forces every single theory crafter to throw everything we came up with regarding team building over the last three years straight out the window. Yeah. Never before has a character embodied the phrase, this changes everything, quite so literally. G'day, g'day everyone, I'm the Immersive Fish, and it's time to dive straight into everything you want and need to know about the one and only Farina De Fontaine. Let's start this video with a fair word of warning. While Farina herself may have the emptiest of heads, her kit isn't exactly simple, and unlike many units, she isn't someone you can just put in a team and expect it to work. She's essentially a trade offer, granting fantastic off-field damage, a bit of hydro application, the ability to use Marechaussee on every on-fielder, and a massive universal damage buff in exchange for draining HP at a noticeable rate and requiring a solid healer to achieve her ceiling. To put things a little more normally for my fellow smooth brains, under ideal circumstances, not only is she going to be doing more damage than Yalan, but she's giving the equivalent of two well-invested Kazuha buffs to every party member on and off field regardless of their element or damage type. What do you need to get those ideal circumstances? Use a healer that heals a lot. That's it. I'll get into more specifics later, but I cannot understate the impact that Farina has when you adapt to the downsides she innately brings. In teams which rely on the damage of individual units over transformative reactions, going forward she's always going to be at least a consideration. She also just makes healers better, which is really good for the game state overall. That gene you've been sitting on for two years and never built? Yeah, she's really good now, and that's all thanks to Little Miss Pipe Bomb over here. If you were on the fence, I can safely say Farina is not a character you'll regret adding to your roster. And if you don't want her, you probably just haven't played the Archon Quest yet. Anyway, the sea levels are rising, so let's make haste and jump straight into her specifics. Surprisingly, Farina's normals do actually serve a couple of purposes, allowing her to switch between her elemental skills and make use of Nemusia's Annihilation reactions. At the present point in time, Farina is the only character in game that can make use of both Arca alignments, releasing a Spirit Breath Thorn or Surging Blade every 6 seconds depending on her current alignment, just by using her normal attacks. As such, if Nemusia stuff ever becomes necessary for content, which please God, Hoyaverse, don't do that. Farina will be the only Fontaine character you need. Her alignment can be changed with her charged attack, and the alignment itself is indicated by the outfit she's wearing, her default being the darker Uzia alignment. Outside of that and some really pretty animation work, Farina has attack scaling, physical normal attacks, and a kit built around HP scaling hydro damage, need I say more. Next, we have her two elemental skills, each with 30 seconds of active use on a 20 second cooldown, meaning sustaining 100% uptime is very easy. One of these skills is really good, and the other is definitely one of the abilities of all time, so I'll start with that one. While aligned with Numa, Farina will summon the Singer of Many Waters, a stationary ocean that heals the active character and spoils the 4.2 Archon Quest. Yeah. This little guy heals a lot to say the very least, outpacing Kokomi's Jellyfish at similar investment levels. However, unlike Kokomi, that's all the Numa form does. It won't provide any damage or hydro application, and it can't trigger the effect of Farina's A1 passive, which heals off-field units when the on-fielder receives overflow healing, essentially relegating this ability to co-op and overworld exclusively. Over to the Uzia side, buckle up, things are about to get complicated. While aligned with Uzia, Farina will summon three Salon members, each with their own unique damage profile, attack intervals, area of effect, HP drain, and hydro application. As the Salon members have AI, they can be a little bit finicky, but after consistently playing Farina, I found them to be fairly reliable, at least when it comes to their HP drain and damage. All the details about each of the Salon members is on screen now, but to simplify things, you're getting really impressive HP scaling hydro damage in exchange for draining 2.5% of max HP per second on every party member until 
until they reach 50%. The Salon members will also receive an additional base damage modifier for each character in the party that can have their HP drained, applying in a similar way to Yoimiya's skill or Nuvilet's A1 passive. When it comes to Farina's Hydra application, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. In solo Hydra, she isn't making enemies as wet as Shincho or Yelan. While there are some teams that benefit from the lower Hydra application, if you want to use Farina alongside units like Hu Tao or Shangling, double Hydra or at least Kazuha with a Hydra infusion is pretty much going to be required. To finish up the Uzia skills functionality, the HP drain is actually an upside, not only enabling Farina's burst, but also Manish Yossi Hunter on every onfielder. Shockingly, there's a lot of characters in the game that can very easily benefit from the equivalent of 11 average crit rate substats, especially if that 15% normal and charge attack damage bonus also gets utilized. As for her A4, it directly ties into her skill, granting additional damage bonus for the salon members in her Uzia form and reducing the healing interval in her not-so-good form. The maximum buffs for each is achieved at 40,000 HP, which is important to keep in mind for her optimal builds. I'll be getting into that later though. Last on stage, we have Farina's Burst, the single most impactful part of her kit, and that's saying something given how strong her skill is. Outside of the initial hit of HP scaling Hydro damage, once the burst is cast for the next 18 seconds, every change in HP will grant fanfare points, each point representing a 1% change in max HP and granting additional incoming healing bonus and damage percent for the whole party. At C0, the maximum amount of fanfare is capped at 300, and if you max this at talent level 10, Farina will be giving the whole party 75% damage bonus, regardless of the damage type or element or whether they're on field or not. Additionally, because damage percent doesn't appear in the stat block of characters, units that snapshot like Shangling can still receive the damage increase even if they've already cast the ability that snapshots. The only thing to keep in mind is fanfare stacks last the duration of the current burst, so if it ends or you cast her burst off cooldown after 15 seconds, your fanfare will reset to zero. The burst state is indicated by these bubbles around the edge of the screen, and while there is no direct fanfare counter, you can tell when you're at max stack when there's stars mixed in with the bubbles. When it comes to talent priority, it's burst above all, as the increase in damage bonus for each level is more significant than most talent scaling in the game. After that, level her skill, and she's done. You can pretty safely ignore her normals unless you decide to push all the way to C6, where they become a little more relevant. Farina is another unit that you also want to take all the way to level 90. Not only does her primary damage scale from max HP, but it also ties directly into her A4 passive, so having the additional base to scale off will make hitting 40 thousand HP far easier. Now that all sounds pretty damn good, but with Farina being a more complex unit, she does come with some downsides and nitpicks alongside that, and even though I love her, I don't want to sweep any issues under the rug. So let's go through them, shall we? First and foremost, Farina needs a healer. I want to start with this one because it's unbelievably important for team building, and I don't think the reasoning behind why has been properly explained. In a healerless comp without any units that have HP manipulation in their kits, your first rotation is going to be fine, but it's the second rotation onwards where problems start showing and will persist through every chamber of the current floor in Abyss. The whole party will be at around 50% HP, and that's not somewhere you want to be locked at, as Farina will lose the additional skill damage modifier, she has no way to gain fanfare outside of the party tanking hits or switching to her numer alignment, which will result in a significant damage loss, and the whole party will be in one-shot range for harder abyss floors. The only time not bringing a healer is really an option is when constellations start being considered, and the one that enables it for most teams is... C6. In other words, if you want to use Farina, bring a healer. Next up, Farina is not a plug-and-play type of unit. While I think she is pretty flexible, the requirement to bring a healer means that pre-existing teams will either need composition or build changes at the minimum to maximize Farina's utility. In some cases, this could result in an overall team downgrade. I doubt that will happen often, but it could. Finally, when it comes to major downsides, not all healers are made equal in the eyes of Reverse Aqua. Characters which can team heal are going to be the best pairings for Farina, as they will allow you to maximize fanfare earlier in the rotation in order to get the most out of her buff. I'll talk more on healers that work best in the pseudo team building section at the end of the video, but that is the catch. No, not that one. Given the nature of gacha games, not everyone's going to have access to these units, and while there are substitutes, that won't necessarily result in the most comfortable or optimal gameplay which some people do care about. With the core downsides out of the way, it's time for little nitpicks. 
Karina has no impact on pure EM scaling reactions, so in teams focused on them, she can pretty much be seen purely as a wasted slot. In a similar vein, units that have a lot of damage bonus built into their kits like Shao won't see a significant uptick in performance from Farina when compared to, say, Bennett. Lastly, Farina is difficult to build. She's very energy hungry in some teams, she wants a lot of HP, and she wants crit on top of that. This can very easily lead to her stats being spread way too thin across the board. But that's what I'm here to help with. And in fact, I think I've stalled long enough. Let's get into the builds. I'm going to start with energy requirements, as it's pretty much the crux of everything going forward. On the low end, if you're running Farina in mono hydro, 120 to 140% ER should be enough to get by. But on the other hand, in solo hydro with low team energy generation, you're going to need more than 200%. From my personal experience, I've been able to get a burst off cooldown consistently with 190% ER in most teams, but I generally have a Favonius user accompanying her. My general recommendation would be to aim for a minimum of 180% if you intend on using her in a variety of teams. While it is a little bit lower than my 190, it gives her a bit more flexibility to focus on offensive stats, and with one or two fav procs, it should be more than enough. That being said, I've got the energy recharge calculator linked in the description, so each of you can calculate her specific needs based on your chosen teams. Next up, main stats and weapons. Farina wants to be different here too, as with her A4 considered, an HP goblet will often outperform Hydro Damage Bonus. As such, in situations where she has high ER requirements, her main stats are going to be HP, HP crit for ER weapons, and ER, HP crit for everything else. When she doesn't need as much energy, HP, HP crit is the way to go for all but one circumstance, which I'll touch on when we go over that specific weapon. Speaking of which, because Farina's energy needs do vary a lot depending on the team, representing each weapon in a high ER build exclusively is a little disingenuous, so I've done calculations for both 180 ER and 120 ER. Kicking things off, Fleur Sans Ferryman is going to be my general free-to-play recommendation. It's a fantastic general purpose option that provides a good bit of energy recharge, bonus ER for the first 5 seconds after casting the skill, and a noticeable amount of skill crit rate, all while being attainable through fishing. Outside of one other option, it's going to be Farina's baseline, and given the performance of the other options, I don't think anything beyond Fleuve is going to be worth going for unless you plan to heavily vertically invest. Next up, my long-term players rejoice because Christmas has come early. Festering Desire is her best 4-star option, and for high ER builds, it's only beaten out by her signature. Stat-wise, it's literally just Fleuve, but better. Unfortunately though, if you didn't get it back in 1.2, there's no way to get your hands on it now. For us that do have it, consider it an extra anniversary reward, because Festering Desire finally has a permanent home on your Arena. Following on from that, we've got Wolfang. I'm not going to spend much time on this weapon because I really don't like it. Outside of the crit rate and the skill damage bonus, Wolfang doesn't provide much as it only stacks on field. While it's okay at high refinements and low ER teams, getting 5 battle passes just for that kind of performance isn't really worth it as far as I'm concerned. Moving into the 5 stars, Jade Cutter is a really solid option that makes artifact farming a lot easier purely because of how much crit rate it gives. That combined with the additional bit of HP means it synergizes pretty well with Farina's kit overall. For high ER builds, it's competitive with Festering, and at low ER when looking at personal damage, it's second only to her signature. Key of Kajna Soot is the most interesting weapon option for Farina overall, and while it does have lower personal damage, I think it's on par with her signature in the grand scheme of things. First and foremost, it provides the most HP, making the 40,000 HP threshold very easy to attain, but more importantly, it's the only option that provides a noticeable team buff while providing good personal damage. It's very similar to using Elegy for the end on Yalan instead of Aqua Simulacra. Splendor gives Farina more personal damage, but Key gives more to the team while retaining competitive damage overall. Two things to keep in mind though. In low ER builds, because you'll be using an HP Sands, Key will actually get more value out of a Hydro Bonus Goblet, as you'll be maxing out Farina's A4. Additionally, if you're running Farina in a Nilu team, don't use Key on both characters, as the effect will be overridden by the most recent proc, and it also doesn't stack off field. Finally, her signature, Splendor of Tranquil Waters. This is universally her best in slot weapon, but I wouldn't recommend going for it unless you plan on C6ing her first. This weapon banner is not very good thanks to the green donut, and I don't think 5 star weapons are worth going for unless there's more than a 30% improvement over the baseline option. Regardless of how much ER Farina needs, this weapon won't be providing a performance uplift to that standard, and Farina's constellations in comparison are extremely good. So yes, 
Don't get me wrong, it very much is her best weapon, but it isn't one I'd recommend going for as the performance improvement isn't as much as I'd like to see from a 5 star. To round weapons out, I'm quickly going to mention one other option. Fav can also be really good as always, but given how many units really want Fav Sword and how well Farina can make use of Fleuve, I'd suggest just using the pipe. The extra ER from the passive will make up for the lack of clear particles and the extra crit rate is very valuable. For Farina's artifact sets, just run Golden Troop. The performance of this set compared to every other option is mind-boggling, but hey, that tends to happen when Hoyo decide to make a set that says give 70% skill damage for playing your character correctly. There is an argument to be made for Tenacity of the Millilith, given Farina can very easily maintain 100% uptime on the 4-piece, but with how much personal damage you lose out on by running it, I don't think there's a situation where it's ever going to be the better option, outside of maybe damage per screenshot teams focused on an attack scale. Hypercarry. If you don't have a 4-piece farmed yet, a 2-piece, two 2-piece two combo of HP HP, HP Hydro, Emblem, Golden Troop, all of that will work fine, but definitely work towards getting a Golden Troop 4-piece. It's her best set by a mile. Lastly, substat priority. ER is the main focus until she can burst every rotation, then crit and HP percent are roughly equal until you get to that 40,000 HP mark. Then just focus on crit and you're off to the races. There you have it, the full build guide for the most complicated character in the game currently. But we're not done yet. While I'm usually not one to go super in depth on constellations, Farina, like so many things already, is an exception, because not only are all her constellations pretty good, but I think she has the best C6 in the entire game. That being said, Farina is easily one of the most complete C0 characters you can add to your roster. Nothing feels like it's locked behind constellations, and she's extremely capable, as is. Please keep in mind, especially if you're free to play, that every constellation could have been a brand new character, and if you're going to swipe, do not spend outside your means. Farina's C1 is interesting. Not only does it front load some of her fanfare by instantly granting 150 points, but it raises the cap from 300 to 400. In terms of damage bonus at talent level 10, the whole party is now instantly getting 37.5% after casting Farina's burst, and the new maximum is 100%. C1 also does one other thing which isn't quite as obvious. It actually makes the max fanfare easier to achieve. The difference between 150 and 400 is 250, so in order to max her buff, you need 50 50% less HP change than you would at C0, potentially resulting in more time at max fanfare each rotation. It's a really good con overall, but I don't think it's quite as impactful as some of the other really good C1s, like in Hu Tao, Nivillet, or Risley's case. C2 is a pretty typical Archon level C2, being extremely strong and doing a lot to say the very least. Kicking this off, it increases the amount of fanfare generation even more, making a 1% HP change grant 3.5 fanfare. Having C2 means C1 is already going to be active, so the whole party only needs a total change of 72% max HP to generate the remaining 250 fanfare. This has a decent effect on team building, as Nuvulet and kind of, Risley, can practically run Farina without a healer thanks to their HP manipulation. A prototype Amber user on a team can now be enough to fully max out fanfare. Healers that previously weren't as effective are now far better, as less healing is needed overall. Farina's own A1 gets significantly better, and really good burst healers can now guarantee max fanfare right at the start of a rotation. And that is just the first half of her C2. After the initial 250 fanfare is generated, it will start to overcap, increasing Farina's max HP by 0.35% for each point over the 400 limit, stopping at 140% HP. To max this out, you'll need to generate a total of 650 fanfare points, which is equivalent to roughly a 186% HP change. Funnily enough, that's still less than you needed at C1 to max out her fanfare. If the team you're using Farina in can consistently get that 140% HP, it can have an impact on her build, leaning more towards a Hydro Goblet than HP, but it mainly serves to increase her personal damage. This is a really, really good constellation, and we're only at C2. Who the f designed this character? C3, thank god, is way simpler. It's three burst levels, which means at max fanfare stacks, the total damage bonus will be 124% at max talent level. Nice. C4 massively lowers energy requirements by refunding 16 energy over a normal rotation, thus closing the gap between her signature and other damage-oriented weapons and the ER weapons, to a point where I'd suggest using them over choices like Fliv or Festering. C5 is three skill levels, which will result in roughly 16% additional damage from her skill, and Finally, the big one, C6. 
This constellation is an essay and a half, but it's powerful to say the very least, granting a hydro infusion and significant HP scaling on Farina's normals after casting her skill for 10 seconds or 6 hits, whichever is first. If you're in the Uzia form, her normals will heal the party, and in her Numa form you'll get even more HP scaling and will drain HP from your party. The most noteworthy thing C6 does is remove Farina's reliance on a healer for your party, essentially freeing up a slot to reintroduce units like Kuzuha for even more damage potential. It also gives her a proper on-field nuking playstyle, kind of like Yelan at C6. I know this has been a longer one, but just hold on for a little longer because we're in the final stretch. Due to her flexibility, I'm not going to go over specific Farina teams purely for the sake of time, and I might save that for a separate video on its own at some point down the track. Instead, I'm going to quickly run through specific healers that fit her best, as that will be the core of team building with Farina. Starting with the burst healing options, you have Jean, Baiju, Charlotte, and Mika. All of these characters have some form of team-wide burst healing, which allows them to front-load fanfare generation and counter Farina's drain. Generally, these will be the best options overall. Jean and Baiju specifically provide a lot of value due to the additional utility they bring alongside healing, but Charlotte and Mika, especially when constellations are considered, are more than enough, and depending on the teams you're playing, may even be better options. As for single target healers, the only ones worth considering are Shinobu and Bennett. Shinobu heals a lot, even when built as a hyperbloom trigger, and those teams tend to rotate quite quickly as is. As such, if you're using Nahida along Alongside her, switching Nahida to a prototype Amber while definitely impacting her personal damage will provide enough healing for good fanfare generation in those teams. In Bennett's case, all you have to do is switch his build. Not a lot of people know Bennett can actually heal a lot, and in Farina teams, using him on ER HP healing bonus will provide more than enough healing to capitalize on fanfare while still providing the party with his huge attack buff. Last up is the on-field healers. If you like Kokomi or Noel, rejoice, because both synergize unbelievably well with Farina. When on field, these units can party-wide heal, and given their damage scales from their healing stat, both become very potent damage dealers. In Noelle's case, there's genuinely an argument to be made that she's better than Ito, going forward in both Geo teams and as a Hydro driver using the Archaic Petra set to increase off-field damage. Kokomi, on the other hand, was already a fantastic driver for teams like Taser, and Farina has only made those even stronger. And that, everyone, is it. Everything and I do mean everything you'd really want to know about Farina, or at least the core stuff. I thoroughly hope you've managed to get a decent bit out of this video, because I've really enjoyed putting it together, and if you're seeing this, thank you. It's been a long one, but I think it's my best piece of content yet. Farina, despite her intricacies, is easily one of my favorite characters in the entire game, and hopefully if I haven't completely fried your brains just yet, you might be able to have as much fun with her as I'm having. If you did get something out of the video though, subscribe. Join me so I can keep showing you good quality stuff like this and more dumb stuff down the road. Oh, all the plans I have for this channel. As usual with the subscriptions, uh, I'll do like 14 dips for each subscriber. I guess I, I don't know. Sure, that's how it works. Well, that's me done. Catch you all on the next one. Until then, make sure you all take it easy.